For today's quiz, we're going to be talking about a cephalopod. Most of us know it as the Nautilus. And you've seen these shells are kind of famous. If we were to cut this in half, you can see the backside where there's chambers. And each one of these chambers is filled by this living creature. And remember, this creature has survived for hundreds of millions of years. It's a pretty good design. But what we're looking at is every time one of these chambers gets sealed off and the animal moves further and further out, it ends up spiraling out. Now that spiral is going to be very uh, similar to what's called the golden spiral. And if you're thinking golden spiral sounds like something with a golden rectangle, well, you're right. And if you're thinking golden rectangle, that's related to the golden ratio, you're right again. And if you're thinking all of this is connected to Fibonacci again, you're correct. So I'll hold this paper up in a second, but I have a larger version of this on the board here. What we're trying to figure out is can your students draw this spiral out following Fibonacci? So let me hold this up and you'll see that I've already started the pattern for you to get to help you along because it's way too difficult to know where to start. So I'll hold this up and I'll put it close first and then I'll move it back. And here is our starting point right down here. I've done the first three numbers for us. I'll read this to, to you. It says, can you complete the golden spiral by following the Fibonacci sequence? The first three numbers have been completed below, here and here. And you'll see um, what we're talking about in a second. The spiral should always end diagonally from where it started in each box. This paper very closely approximates a golden rectangle. However, the printer cannot print the edges uh, to, the, to the edges of the paper, uh, especially at the top and the bottom. What this means is, if you go to www.idealizedscience.org, I'll have this template for you. This is a uh, typical legal piece of paper, eight and a half by 14. And it's very close to a golden rectangle but not quite. If you cut off, and it's about a quarter of an inch right here, suddenly this really does become nearly perfect for a golden rectangle, where I'd have a half, a half, and this would be one over feet. I can include this also. This is kind of like my calculations, how I did this. I used the metric system, so it was a little bit more tricky. Uh, regardless, um, Eight and a half by 14, if I were to take that ratio uh, of um, 14 over eight and a half, I get 1.647. That's not quite the golden ratio of 1.618. Cut that little quarter of an inch off, and I suddenly do. All right, let's get back to our quiz. We want you to use the blocks on this page and see if you can pick up the pattern. We start right at the dot here, and we did one, one, and then we did our two. Notice they're always going to add uh, diagonal from where they started. All right, give your students a chance to see what they can do. And I make plenty of copies of this. Um, so if they would like to start over, it's not a big mess. And again, it's legal paper and most printers will take that legal paper. All right. Students might ask you to help them with Fibonacci again. They might have forgotten. Not a big deal. So Fibonacci in the sequence we can write as we could say it starts at zero and then we end up having one and then uh, one plus zero equals one and then one plus one equals two and then two plus one equals our three and then three plus two equals our five, and then our five plus three equals our eight, and then the eight plus uh, five gives us our 13, and then we'll have 21, and so on. Once they realize that, they can start to see the pattern. They could say, look, it's a one by one block here, and then it goes to another one by one, and maybe that zero is gonna be our dot. So we've already got these two and notice we're spiraling out just like our nautilus shell is spiraling so we started at the dot and we ended at the diagonal 
uh, across from where we started. So I did one, one, and then I've got to continue that pattern on. So I got to get my other one. So I spiral up and then I'm going to do my two. Now remember, it's a two by two. We're making a square each time. And so they'll draw this out as a two by two. And I've already done this uh, to make things a little bit easier, but you'll notice that you have to continue that spiral. And if I uh, was on this block, I start there, I end there, and then I go completely diagonal. I'm gonna make an arc. So from there, they're gonna say the next one clearly has to be my three by three. This is where they're gonna struggle. A lot of them are going to try and draw it on top here and make a three by three, or they might go to the other side. Give them a few minutes. Um, most of them are going to end up redrawing it. If they're doing it in pen, it might be easier just to give them another sheet of paper. But give them hints, and you can say that, look, I'm spiraling out. So where do you think the three by three would go? Give them a moment, see what they can do. All right, let's explain how to draw this. I want to point out that uh, working on the paper is actually going to be a little bit easier because you've got these blocks, and those blocks are going to be really, really helpful. Uh, it was too hard to draw every single line into a grid on the, the board here. Uh, one of the things I do want to print out or point out on the printout is that, remember, our printer can't quite get the bottom line here or the top line. They're there but it just can't print. Most printers can't bleed all the way to the edge, so they're just gonna leave that off there. But understand that line is there. That's why I have that little 21 pointing down to where it should be. Uh, also, if you're a teacher and you're gonna print these out, make sure you're printing out the PDF and not the Word version, because if the Word version um, looks at your printer, it might change things slightly. So PDF is, is pretty much set. So uh, let's see if we can help our students along here and provide an explanation. Now notice that I had a one by one block here, my one, my one, and my two. And notice if I have a one, I take it over here and I'm going with a spiral, I then end up with another block, which is one. So I end up with my two. And notice that my two by two will fit on there because I've already got the width. Now I'm simply going to add uh, the rest of that square. And remember, we're talking about the golden uh, rectangle here. Remember, we always have a square, and then we have another part that makes the rectangle. And that's what we're doing each and every time. So let's think. If I want to end up getting a three, I'm going to end up with a three by three. Where do I get that three by three? Look, I already have three in this direction. Clearly, a three by three hanging off the top, I'd have an edge there, and that doesn't make any sense. It's clearly going to go on this side or that side. The spiral is going in that direction, so clearly we'll use that direction right there. I don't have my grid lines here, so see, let me see if I can uh, do this neatly. I'll go over one, two, three, and I'll put a little dot right here. And then I can bring this over here, and then I'll do the same thing up here. And now you can see that I'm going to have my three by three right here and I'll try to line it up with my existing lines right there and then I've got my three by three and then from there I can kind of finish the spiral off by taking it there all right now that we've done a three by three let's see if they can end up doing what's going to be next which is the five by five let's give them a, uh, a chance to do that all right, most students are going to be able to get this five by five. And if they don't, once you give them this little hint, they're going to get it from here on out. Notice that I've already got my three and then I've got my two. So this whole uh, piece right here is going to end up being five. So I can end up getting my five by five simply by taking this the rest of the way down and this one the rest of the way down. And that's going to end up being my five by five. And then I can take my spiral and I can simply work this all the way around. I didn't spiral it very well. Let me try that again. I don't like that curve. You want to take, it's, it's kind of hard to, I'm trying not to erase what I already have. But you want to take it all the way to the edge and curve it. All right, from there, we know that we've got our five completed. 
We're now going to do our eight. And lo and behold, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we already know five and three is going to be eight. So this is going to end up being our eight by eight. And I'll take this one straight over. And that's going to be our eight by our eight. And I'll take this over right here. We now know that we're going to have our 13. And I can see right along here, I've got 13 up. And then I've got my 5 plus my 8. So our 13 is going to go right up top here like this. So that's going to be my 13 by my 13. And let's see if we can complete that. And then our last one is, notice our 21 by 21. And I can just take that right here. Down to the bottom. And we'll notice it really does look like our Nautilus shell. Pretty impressive. All right, that's our quiz. But if you stick around, we're going to go into a little bit more in-depth analysis. All right, it's fun to draw these out and practice our geometry, but we want to remember that all of this is related to our golden rectangle. And we're really talking about phi, which is going to be 1.618. That ratio is going to be rather important. In other words, if I have the full rectangle right here, I can end up saying, well, if this whole thing is 1.618, this is going to end up being 1. And the way that I can get that square is I can say, well, it's 1 over phi. So I could say uh, 1 all over our phi, which is going to be 1 all over 1.618. Is going to be, and I'll put that in my calculator even though I know the answer. Double check, turn that on. So I'll take 1 divided by 1.618, and that's 0.618. So I could say 0.618. In other words, if I took 1 over phi, I end up with, and notice if uh, that's about six tenths so if this whole thing was think of thinking of it as like being ten this would be about six of those and then from there i can end up looking at the next one and i could say well this is going to end up making a rectangle right here this large rectangle how would i end up getting the square well i could end up taking what i already have and end up taking one over phi again and so i already took one over phi so i can take one over phi divided by phi again. So I can end up saying 1 all over our phi and then divide that by phi again because I already got this uh, small square. Now I want to get the next square. Another way to write this is I could say 1 all over phi is the same thing as writing phi over 1. I can do this little trick where I multiply by the number 1. I'll just put 1 over phi over 1 over phi to get this to cross out. 1 over phi, 1 all over phi. Phi crosses out, 1 crosses out, and I'm really left with 1 all over phi squared. So what we're going to end up seeing is every time we spiral along here, I could do the same thing now. I could take 1 over phi squared and now divide that by phi again. And I could say, so I've got 1 all over and I've got my phi squared divided by phi again, is really going to be 1 all over phi cubed. And then I can do it again. So I'd end up with this block right here being 1 all over our phi to the fourth power and to the fifth power and so on. It's just wonderful to end up playing with mathematics like this and get our relationships, especially when we do lesson after lesson. All right, let's give you a couple of real world examples of this. When we're talking about real-world examples of Fibonacci and the golden spiral, understand they're usually approximations. The Fibonacci series works well, but there's a whole series of logarithmic spirals that we can use. 
So if you were to measure this very accurately, you might find that it's not exactly Fibonacci um, or the golden spiral. Same thing goes with hurricanes or you might see spinning galaxies. And there's also other papers talking about hawks and uh, their line of sight and things of that nature. But it's a really nice, easy way to make a spiral. And remember what we did here. We said if this entire thing was 34, I could simply multiply it by, by 0.618. So I could say 34 times 0.618, and I now get uh, my 21. And then from there, I can get my next block that I want to make and simply multiply that by 0.618. And I go from 21 down to 13, and so on. I have some other art pieces that I want to show you that follow this sequence uh, the golden ratio, the golden rectangle, and this golden spiral. But we'll save that for another quiz. All right, let's call it a day with this quiz.